everybody, and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History's Fave Film Fashion. This time we're going back to 1963 for the incredibly joyful Bye Bye Birdie, starring Janet Lee, Dick Van Dyke, and of course, Anne Margaret. Bye Bye Birdie is probably best remembered today for its opening sequence, which saw Anne Margaret kind of running towards the camera, singing and grabbing the skirts of her flax colored chiffon dress. She was so wild and so charismatic and so alive with this sort of sexual energy that it's no wonder this opening sequence became such a talking point. And you may remember in Mad Men, there was an episode when Don Draper tries to recreate the magic of Anne Margaret's Bye Bye Birdie moment in his ad campaign for Patio Cola. Patio is sort of a key word in terms of the costumes in Bye Bye Birdie. Because the wardrobe in Bye Bye Birdie perfectly reflects that Kennedy era mid-century modern patio party look. I always think that Anne Margaret in this era looked as if she was constantly en route to a fabulous patio party somewhere. For those of you who know me or have watched a few of these videos or are part of our Facebook group, you will know that this is my favorite fashion era. The very early 60s, before Twiggy, before Carnaby Street, before Mary Quant, I'm not keen on that mid-mod 60s look at all. But I love late 50s, very early 60s American suburban fashion. However, in this video, I really want to focus on color. I was inspired to do this because of all of the excitement surrounding the costumes in La La Land. Everybody was so thrilled by this use of color in the costumes on screen. My own students, who I love, you know I do, they're so fabulous, came running into class after seeing La La Land and said, Prof H, you've got to see this movie. There is so much color in the costumes. This has never been done before. Well, of course it's been done before. It's just that we haven't seen color on the screen like this in so long that many millennials really believed that this was happening for the first time in La La Land. And it got me to thinking why millennials, and I'm generalizing here, so no offense to any millennials out there who are huge movie buffs, but why millennials don't know old movies? Because Generation X certainly did. I wasn't even born when Bye Bye Birdie came out, but I certainly knew about it when I was. And I arrived at a theory. Tell me if you agree. The millennials have something that Gen X didn't have. They have Facebook, they have Instagram, they have Twitter. When they get home after a night out, they're scrolling, they're clicking, they're tweeting. We didn't do that. We didn't have that. Also, they are the generation of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime, and so are we, thank goodness, we have all of this. But generally, they don't watch old movies on these platforms. They stream and binge watch TV shows, and hey, so do I, and thank goodness, we are living in the golden age of streaming. But I think this is why Gen Xers were always aware of old movies, because when we got home from a night out, we didn't have any of this stuff. What did we have? We had television. And most of us didn't have cable in the early days of cable, so we would just watch whatever was on TV. And late at night, it was usually what? Old movies. And I think that this is why Generation X became so exposed to old movies in a way that the millennials really aren't. But we're here to talk about color and the palette in Bye Bye Birdie perfectly reflects that mid-century modern color wave of corals and buttery yellows and pinks and turquoise and aqua. This palette was reflected in everything in this era. Industrial engineering and cars and in furniture and homeware, even signage. And this mid-century modern palette, of course, is key in Bye Bye Birdie. The wardrobe in Bye Bye Birdie was alive with color. You'll notice I'm using the word wardrobe and not costumes, because apart from Janet Lee's gowns, and we're not discussing Janet Lee in this video, everything else was bought off the rack. 
I love this era and the way that palette was always matched. We've been programmed to think matchy matchy is somehow uncool. I disagree. I love this look. A green sweater with green pants. And what about this? A yellow top with yellow capris and yellow flats. I love this look. And check out Anne Margaret's hot pink midriff ruffled top, her skin tight hot pink capris and perfectly matching flats. What is wrong with matchy matchy? Nothing. I think it's exciting and I think it's fabulous and I think it's great and I really want it to come back. There may be people who think, well, hang on, yes, that colour does look great, but this was a movie. Nobody really wore this much colour all the time. Well, they did. Take a look at some of these catalogue images from 1963, and you can see that people weren't afraid of colour. They embraced it. I would like to embrace it. This is exactly how I want to dress. But what I don't get is why, generally, People would think that the palette in Bye Bye Birdie is fun, but it's not cool, whereas it's essentially the same idea as the colour in La La Land, which everybody thought was so cool. But yeah, they thought it was cool, but will they wear it? Oh no. We, we are still so programmed into this rather dated idea that to wear colour will somehow render us uncool and that if we want to be sexy and edgy, we have to wear all black or black and neutrals. I find shopping for clothes rather difficult, especially as my ideal wardrobe is a mid-century modern wardrobe packed with matchy-matchy colour. Basically, I just want to dress like Anne Margaret in the early 1960s. Now I'm going to do something that I never do. You know what? Um, a lot of times companies and labels contact me because they want me to plug their, their stuff, their merch on the Ultimate Fashion History. And I won't do it because I really want to protect the integrity of the channel. And I will only talk about brands if I believe in them. I have not been asked by this company to plug them. I don't know them. They don't know me. But if you, like me, kind of want to dress as if you are going to an early 60s patio party with Anne Margaret, I think I found a label for us. The brand is from Charleston and it's called Escapada Living and it's the closest I've come to finding that mid-century modern American suburban patio party look I so love. Colourful, joyful, very flattering cuts for the more mature ladies such as myself. And I can honestly imagine Anne Margaret wearing some of this stuff in 1963. And that's me wearing some of this stuff today. And I hope you liked this episode of Fave Film Fashion on The Ultimate Fashion History. You can contact me through my website, amandahalley.com. Join our Facebook group. We are always talking about this kind of stuff over there. I'm back every week with more episodes on The Ultimate Fashion History, so just click the little circle to subscribe. And until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now.